Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Sid Cowley. I'm a PhD student studying at the University of York and working at the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy on Diverter Plasma Physics. Today is Wednesday, the 8th of February, and I'm here to give you your Fusion News Update. Stories today include 1. Nuclear fusion's future, according to the woman leading the charge. 2. Nuclear fusion hopeful, TAE, launches spin-off focused on energy storage, e-mobility. 3. Researchers report on metal alloys that could support nuclear fusion energy. 4. Renaissance Fusion raises funds to build nuclear fusion technology in Europe. 5. NT Tau raises 22 million to explore way of generating energy from nuclear fusion. And as always, I'll have some bonus stories at the end for you. 1. Nuclear fusion's future, according to the woman leading the charge. Our first story today is a report from the World Economic Forum, which had its annual meeting in Davos last month. Speaking at the meeting and very excitingly representing nuclear fusion was Dr. Kim Boodle, the director of the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the United States. Now, for those avid listeners of Fusion News, you may recognize Lawrence Livermore as the host of the National Ignition Facility, which absolutely broke records and made history last year as the first laboratory to achieve net fuel gain from a fusion plasma. At Davos, Dr. Boodle discussed the recent results and the general scope and scale of the National Ignition Facility, or NIF and particularly highlights the fact that these results prove the fundamental idea of fusion, but didn't demonstrate that it will be ready tomorrow by any means. In fact, when asked the question of timeline for commercializing fusion, Dr. Boodle said that it will take probably two or three decades, scaling from where we are today to what you would require for a power generating plant is a pretty significant challenge. And in inertial confinement fusion, there are many practical challenges from scaling up to a reactor. For example, NIF is currently able to perform a few shots a week, but a reactor will likely need to fire at a rep rate of more than 10 times per second. That's an incredible leap in technological advancement that needs to happen. Notwithstanding, there are many improvements and solutions that could be made. For example, laser technology has progressed leaps and bounds since the 1980s when the National Ignition Facility's lasers were first designed. Apart from the technological solutions, Dr. Boodle discusses the need to collaborate with the private sector going forward. She highlights the fundamental research of NIF is well suited for government funding, saying seven of the 10 critical technologies didn't exist at the time. They had to be created along the way. This is what public sector investment is good at. Large scale, able to manage risk over time and bring resources to bear at the laboratory from a wide range of disciplines. But for commercializing, Dr. Boodle emphasizes the role of the private sector, saying, if we wanna take this forward, public-private partnerships are going to be essential. Two, nuclear fusion hopeful, TAE, launches spin-off focused on energy storage, e-mobility. Our second story comes from Energy Storage News and covers Fusion Industry Association member, TAE Technologies, a private fusion company that's been operating since the 1990s. But rather than talking about fusion for energy, this article has a really interesting twist and discusses TAE's spin-off venture into electricity storage and conversion through a subsidiary TAE Power Solutions. The spin-off began originally because TAE needed a fast and flexible energy storage solution for their prototype reactors. Their current device, Norman, needed about 750 megawatts of power to run, but was based in California where the grid only provides two megawatts of power. So they developed a solution to store and discharge grid energy efficiently, which they call converter battery modules. Now, as part of this spin out, TAE Power Solutions is now contributing to APC18 Celeritas, a consortium to develop advanced battery technology and includes companies such as BMW. Overall, I think this story is a great example of how fusion research progresses a wide range of technologies that can be used for many applications, not just fusion for energy. Three, researchers report on metal alloys that could support nuclear fusion energy. Our third story is a great technical piece on some really interesting material science and comes from physics.org. More specifically, it's about a high detail study of tungsten heavy alloys. But why do we care about these alloys in the first place? Well, tungsten is one of the most important materials in a fusion reactor because it is extremely heat resistant, which makes it a top candidate for the material surrounding the roughly 100 million degree burning plasma within. 
Now, the main issue with tungsten, though, is its brittleness, making it not a good structural material. But it can be made more flexible and ductile by mixing it with other metals, forming tungsten heavy alloys. Now, this article discusses a hot rolling technique to produce the alloy that forms microstructures that are similar to the structure of nacre, an exceptionally strong natural material found in seashells of all things. Teams at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory and Virginia Tech put out a study diving deep into this alloy, using techniques such as transmission electron microscopy to study the material structure and boundaries on an incredibly detailed scale. The study revealed why the nacre-like structure is so effective and is part of fantastic ongoing work into making materials that can withstand the unprecedented heat and structural stresses that will be present in a fusion reactor. Four, Renaissance Fusion raises funds to build nuclear fusion technology in Europe. Our fourth story covers the French fusion startup and FIA member Renaissance Fusion. The company wants to leverage novel technologies to achieve fusion in a stellarator, which is a sort of twisted donut shaped magnetic confinement fusion device. The novel technologies they want to implement include high temperature superconductors, which we've seen in companies such as CFS and Tokamak Energy, but also things like liquid lithium plasma facing components, which are expected to help materials from plasma damage. This story from Nuclear Engineering details a recent seed round led by Lower Carbon Capital, in which Renaissance Fusion raised $16 million. This funding will contribute to further development of technologies and growing the company, which hopes to have a team size of more than 60 people by the end of this year. Five, NT Tau raises 22 million to explore way of generating energy from nuclear fusion. Our final story focuses on NT Tau, a relatively new fusion company and FIA member that may be one to look out for in the future. The Tel Aviv-based company has not yet made public any specific designs for a reactor, but says it aims to combine the best of tokamak and stellarator technology, whilst operating at a higher density using faster heating techniques than other devices. In its most recent round of funding, NT Tau raised $22 million, bringing its total funding to $28 million. Right, well, that's all for our main stories today. But before you click away, I have some really interesting bonus stories to share as well. And two of them, in fact, are podcasts. The first is an episode from the podcast Energy Evolution and features Tammy Ma, a plasma physicist at the Livermore National Laboratory, and our own Andrew Holland, CEO of the Fusion Industry Association. The second is from Bloomberg, which features U.S. Congressman Chuck Fleischman, who discusses nuclear fusion and Oak Ridge National Lab, which is an important hub for fusion research in his district. Finally, with all the talk recently about AI and tools such as ChatGPT, you might be interested to find out that Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, is actually a big investor into nuclear fusion. In fact, his biggest investment to date was 375 million US dollars into Fusion Industry Association member Helion Energy. Right, well, that's all for Fusion News this week. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, as always, please feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. And of course, if any of these stories interested you in particular, their links will be in the description, and you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for deep dives into several of these stories. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.